Even today, it looks new and exciting. Five years ago, APT broke the British speed record by traveling at 138 miles per hour. Four years later, it was completely withdrawn from passenger service, beleaguered by technical and commercial problems. As a train, was it just too different? The normal approach within the railway engineering department was that of evolutionary design so that uh, only one or perhaps two things would be changed at a time. The major emphasis really on the APT compared with the conventional approach was that we would make a, a fairly large step forward and that was implicit of course in the specification for the train. But how do you develop an innovation like this? and lessons that British Rail learned in the 20 years since the idea was first proposed. We're going to look at the research and development involved in producing the APT, how the project was managed, how that management structure has since evolved, and how BR are planning for their new fast train, the IC225. To find out all this, we're going to travel from Crewe to Carlisle on a test run of the only APT still operating. We'll also look at the implications of matching long-term research to the changing commercial requirements of the railways. Some would ask whether research and development can be justified in the day-to-day -day operation of a public service. On the journey, we're going to talk to some key people who've been involved in innovating British Rail's fast trains. Coaches, so that the passenger doesn't feel as though he's been thrown sideways. And so we have got slightly chamfered sides to the coach, so that we can actually rotate the vehicle within our loading gauge, which of course is the imaginary tunnel through which the train has got to pass. Many of these features arose because of a historical legacy, a railway network that originated with the Victorians. Wouldn't it be cheaper to build from scratch, as other countries have done? Well, APTE was an experimental vehicle, and therefore the requirements on it were to prove concepts in broad terms rather than prove that it could run for a 30-year life fulfilling those concepts. Thousand miles. The power unit was a gas turbine and the brakes and suspension were the outcome of those original research ideas. They came out of the new railway technical center at Derby which fostered research on wheel rail dynamics led by Alan Wickens and his team lost a certain amount in its cohesion because it was a, um, if you like, a, a well-knit team that suddenly was dispersed and any change, I think, in the middle of a project, no matter what the organisation, uh, leads to certain difficulties. The train's technical problems were primarily those of overall reliability, in that uh, which had an unfortunate habit of failing and thereby exposing passengers to uh, unacceptable acceleration levels, the ride of the train was not adequate. Uh, there were problems in various electrical areas of the train, uh, a fairly serious potential safety problem with the design of the wheel set, which took some very considerable sorting out. After its withdrawal from passenger service in 1981, the new team under Mitchell worked to improve reliability levels and reduce maintenance. This they achieved, and in 1984, the APT was used in relief service. Off! 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 On! We felt uh, carry passengers with confidence would, would have not been uh, acceptable from the point of view of operating a wide service of APTs. This was... In 1985, the relief service ceased and the APTs were broken up except for this one, which remained as a test vehicle.
these engineers are testing one form of suspension for the APT successor. But times have changed, and British Rail will not themselves be building the new train under their new commercial policy. If we look back over the last 15 or 20 years, the British Railways Board, in effect, designed and built all its own running stock. Recently, the Board has taken a fundamental decision that that methodology is no longer appropriate. We are's new train, the IC225. Project manager for this contract is David Rollin. How does he see the difference between this and the APT? It won't tilt because we've proved on APT P that it's unnecessary for the power car to tilt to achieve the level of track forces required. Simplification of the project has enabled VR to cut out some of the research and development stages. Principally, the reason we're not building prototype locomotives or indeed prototype coaches for that matter is because we don't have time. We have to judge the risks of going straight in with the locomotive. We have decided that provided we have the most thorough product shakedown program, then I think we can manage the uh, risks. To what extent then will BR minimize those risks by drawing on the technology of the APT? We must bear in mind that under the relationship we now have with industry, it's... APT technology might still be of use to BR. But if the business policy is now to contract out design and manufacture of a train like this, how does BR see the role of in-house research? Part of the research program is, in effect, funded by the board as a strategic program. So what are the lessons to be learned from it all? A very clear lesson from APT is that you do need to have dedicated resources with a very clear focus of responsibility and authority at the project leadership level. And there are different views about why APT didn't become a successful passenger train. Some would blame organizational and managerial problems. Others say that the whole project was just too complex. Uh, in total, I think that is true, given they have a particular problem on the railway that we can't go and do our development in some private test track somewhere or up in the sky where nobody can see us. Whatever we do is really done in public. And so every failure that we have is uh, likely to be reported as a failure. And uh, every success that we have is not likely to be reported as a success. Obviously, since APT did not materialize into regular passenger traffic, in that sense one has to say that we failed to meet what the long-term objectives were. Nevertheless, from a technical point of view, there has been a very considerable achievement in APT that has now been applied to the design of the future generations of railway vehicles.